couple things I want you guys to think about is like the, we're going to look at these from two different perspectives. First perspective is just the graphical approach. So if I want to find the value k that is going to make these continuous, based on that last example I talked with you, it might be obvious. It might not be obvious for some of you. So my recommendation to you is, well, let's graph what we know. Let's graph 1 half x minus 3. 1, 2, 3, up 1, over 2. That graph looks something like that. Correct? And that's only for values that are x is greater than 0. So it's only going to be going from there, and that's an open circle. Now, I don't know how to graph this when I don't know what k is. So let's give k something easy. How about 0? Can I graph y equals, like if I you know, remember this, y, can I graph negative 3 halves x from there? And it's only going to be graphing it for values that are less than or equal to 0. So that means instead of going down and to the right, or it's negative, right? So therefore, I'd have to go like up and to the left. So I could go up 3, 1, 2, 3, down over 2. And it's going to be less than or equal to 0. So if you look at these, right now, if k is 0, the function is not continuous. right? So I basically need to move this function down 1, 2, 3 units. So then what value of k would make that shift down 3 units? Negative 3, because that's just the y-intercept, right? So negative 3. So k equals negative 3. Now again, I'm only showing this to you because you're like, all right, that's kind of obvious. That's an easy one, right? But again, the reason why I want to do this is because I want to bring you guys to this algebraic approach. These are discontinuous right now when x is equal to 0, right? So if we want them to be continuous, we want them to be continuous when x is equal to 0, not 5, not negative 7. x is equal to 0. So if they're going to share the same x coordinate, if they are connected, that means their y coordinates need to be the same as well. So all you're simply going to do is set both equations equal to one another. And then when x is equal to 0, you're just going to replace x with 0. And when you guys simplify this, you get the algebraic answer. Now again, this answer is relatively simple, because you guys look at this and you're like, I already get the answer from the graph. Like, Why do I need to do this algebraically?